Hey guys, um, she, I'm kind of at work, but um, the lady I watch for her kids came over. Well, two of them took her to mass, so I got about an hour and a half to myself, waiting for stuff to get done. Um, I was hoping to do a quick Bible study, and I just realized I don't have any of my Bible study stuff on me like I did earlier in the week. So, I'm going to have to do that either later tonight or tomorrow. Oh, sorry, I got a little cat over here. A sweet little cat. Um, in the backyard. I don't know who it belongs to, but she comes over every day for food and pets. Well, I guess y'all can't see it. But, uh, yeah, so I've had to work too. Straight Saturdays in a row. Just, it's not something I'm used to doing. Um, usually I'm at church on Saturdays and Sundays. Then outreaches and follow up and prayer and whatever else needs to be done in church. I usually come in and clean after prayer and and all. And I just want to come outside for a little bit. Enjoy a little bit of a breeze. It's cold, but not cold, cold. Um, where I'm at, I think I've got, uh, y'all know by now that, um, uh, I sit for a 94 year old lady with dementia. And, uh, yeah, her daughter just seen how she, how she acts towards us. <sighs> Sometimes she gives us heck which is I guess normal um and I know like most people are different there's some, oh, some similarities so it is hard to deal with but I just want to enjoy the view out here too because the backyard you can see the river from here and if y'all know any uh people from Jacksonville like the people the um, WW Gay, his property is like right behind us. His house is like two, three houses down from this one. But he's got property behind his. And I just realized there's a little white house. Like, right where they had a fence. So, it's a cute little property off of the river. And so today has been interesting is trying to fight her with her bath and not like fight or fire, but she just wants to give you a hard time and giving you a bath and getting a bath and kinda of sucks that she lost her home health aid, her hospice care and home hospice care. Which I mean they might have uh, be able to get it back. She is worse. We've noticed things ourselves. She's getting more antsy and just telling us that she don't feel good. And she's been wanting to sleep more. So, I'm going to try to... i got some laundry in the dryer, so I won't have to do that. But I'm going to try to finish this book. I'm on chapter 7. I've been forever trying to finish it. So hopefully today I can. Um, it's a good book. Check it out. Um, it's called Awaken Alive to Truth by John L. Cooper. If you don't know him, he's the lead singer off of um, Skillet. It's one of my favorite bands. I know I don't look like I rock out, but he's, and he's a good godly man and good Christian and it's a good book for if you're just starting out to be a Christian or you know somebody that's you know thinking about it or just starting out to be a Christian and good for those who are thinking about it it brings good truth to them and there's some people that may have been I would say saved for a while but that go to church but aren't really saved born again um, I know some terms that some people don't really know or grasp or really know what it means. 
If you know, you know. It's stuff I'm going to have to break down and define them and to help everybody to understand it. Um, but it's been really good. Um, the next book I'm going to uh, probably going to read is I have a friend named Jenny. She wrote a book about all the stuff that her husband had went through and her family and just um they had a tragedy in their family where one night um we had a concert at the church and we uh, their youngest son was had just entered his um senior year he was only 17 hadn't even made it to his 18th birthday yet and um, this is gonna be a spoiler it's one thing i want to share and um there's two things, but I don't want to spoil everything. Um, I know some of it, but there's more details in the book that she shares. And, um, you know, he was standing, his name was Jacob, and he was standing right out by the doors. We told, both told him, told him goodnight, and, you know, everybody calls him mom. Mrs. That's been her nickname since she was a kid. You know, everybody calls her dad. And, um, you know, we figure everything will be fine, you know. We're like, hey, see you in the morning, you know, good night, see you in the morning. And I told my mom, hey, see you, Mrs. Tomorrow, uh, you know, I'll be over at Shep's next door, you know, after church. Because that's where she worked at the time. She worked there for like 24 years, and we've known that family for multiple years. I've known them my whole life, and she's known them most of her life, you know since they were kids the owners of ships and uh, so after church she'll go over there and work between services and uh, that was it and most of uh, some of us didn't know this until we came in the tr uh, the prayer room and service uh, they had the prayer open for like four or five minutes for anybody that wants to pray before Sunday school and service um they can do so. Um, but apparently, you know, Jenny and her husband had left, and the kids are like, well, we'll be home a little bit. We're going to help clean and mop down. It was the weekend, so I didn't really think about they're about to stay a little, up a little bit later and help out if they wanted to. And they live in Moodleburg, uh, which is right out kind of outside of the Jacksonville but it's not like too far away maybe a 30 45 minute drive depending on what part sometimes it's less than that um what happened is a drunk driver had pulled out in front of them her his oldest brother was driving and well the drunk driver hit on Jacob's side and they both got ejected out of the car and whole bunch of stuff happened the oldest brother survived and Jacob didn't and it was just a lot of stuff they had to go through with that Jenny had battled cancer twice uh, or three times but um she was able to survive it and you know go through it and it's just that's a lot of stuff they had to struggle through over the years with stuff like that just one thing after another after another and it's like you know you know they weren't doing stuff or saying stuff just to get attention. It was stuff that was actually going on. You know, because there's people out there, fortunately, that will do stuff like that just to get attention. Like, oh, I got this, I got that. And they don't. Um, I'm not going to ruin the whole book for you, for y'all. Um, when I get home, I'll show the book. I'll take a picture, put it on my um, community thing. It's called um, God Prints by Jenny Levitt and um my mom just got done reading it and she's like oh my gosh she's like I don't want to ruin everything for you you're going to have to read it but she's like I did not realize all the stuff they were going through and I think a lot of it I don't want to say her husband I don't want to talk really bad about her husband but he wasn't always the nicest person in the church and there was people that didn't want to come to church because how he acted his attitude and all and I think when everything, and just with stuff that they were going through, I kind of see why he was that. Not saying it's an excuse, but when 
the whole thing, uh, accident happened with their kids, it really changed him. He's like a completely different person. Um, so sweet and nice. And just, he did a 180. It's like, now you want to be around him. And if you just know him now or meet him, you would never tell he was the way he was. I mean, that's how it, how much he's changed. And um, I hate to say it, it's like, as much as I want, you know, wish that never had happened to their kids. But I feel like it almost it had to happen for things to change in him. And um, this is what I say. Like, I hate to say that, but I just like thought about it and prayed about it. I was like, God, please forgive me if I'm in the wrong for that. But it's almost like something had to happen to have him like change things in himself because you know he wasn't doing too good I, I would say spiritually but I'm not saying he everything he was doing was wrong but there was some things that it was just what we call convert killer you know before they we can even get people in the door it's like you know they meet him I was like oh I don't know but um so it's kind of amazing, like, how God changed his, his heart and how he had to sit down and, like, okay, maybe how I'm going about things, what I'm doing, maybe isn't right. And, you know, and it's just, I think it really brought him to his knees. He has more of a humility about him. And it's like, now he's, he got to the point where God can use him with his testimony. Like I said, he's changed. He's a lot nicer, better person, better attitude, and he's able to, what we call launched out, we launched him out, him and his wife in Sanford, Georgia, um, Florida, excuse me, is, you know, we sent him out to start a church, and uh, him and his wife are pastor and pastor's wife, I know they were pastors before, and, um, was it Palaka? They got brought back. I'm not sure why. Sometimes the churches don't seem to do good. No matter how good of a person you are, or how nice and you know, godly you are, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it's not the right timing. Sometimes it has to do with you know one of them, you know. And I went here when that had. I went going to the church when that happened. So you know. They've been going there longer than I have. Um, by uh, May 16th, we said, uh, not 17, 16 years for me. That I've been going and rededicated my life, you know. That's something I wanted to share one day. It's my testimony. I want to write it down and like rehearse it because I know there's going to be things that I'll probably forget. And um, I just want to have a basic outline of what I do want to talk about. Some bullet po uh, points. Oh, excuse me. So, um, yeah. So, hopefully, um, I get off at 5.30, so hopefully I can get to bed at a decent time and maybe do a short, um, Bible study thing. So, I'm trying to do it at least once a week. Um, I'll do it every other week if I had to, as long as I'm doing it more than once a month. But I like to do it at least once a week, like Friday, uh, Friday or Saturday, like do it, maybe load it up by Sunday, Saturday night or Sunday. And um, I do want to do the facts, Friday's uh, fact checks, Friday, uh, I can't speak, Jack's facts Fridays. And um, I know I want to have to hold off on that probably till the end of the year but I'm writing stuff like different stories and of people famous people places things to visit here and I'd rather have a car Ooh, I'd rather have a car where I can on my days off I can go to some of these uh, places and show y'all video uh, take video and pictures to show y'all Um, while I'm talking about those places 
Um, I feel like it would be better than just sitting in some room and talking about it. I mean, I can do a little bit of all of it, but I'm going to take y'all to places and show them. So I did think about Ebb and Force. Um, here with uh, the DuPonts built when they one of them came down and um, I started reading on both Alfred and uh, um, Jesse Ball DuPont there's a couple that came down here and I don't found out more stuff even more stuff about their business ventures down here and them and that I did on when I was doing the thing on uh, Epping Forest. Um, now it's a yacht club. But, um, so I'm like, oh, dang, I already wrote about this stuff. So y'all might see a little different, more information on the place when I do them. I want to combine both of them do with them as a couple in itself. Um, so I figured that'd be interesting and do a drive by like of what the place looks like. Um, I know they don't really let a lot of people in without reservations and stuff like that. Um, when they turned it into the yacht club and um a place for people to get married and stay the night and stuff like that, you have to make reservations um for all that. The news they let the news I'm kind of laughing at this. It, it's funny, but it's not. Um, the news wanted to report it on it, and they let the news come. Be it, they wouldn't let them do any video inside or pictures or anything like that. They only um, made them stand across the street and take a quick video of the cross street, what the front looks like. That was it, and just to talk about it. They were promotional and all that. And I'm like, that ain't right. Like, if you want to advertise what you got going on, I want to see the place. It doesn't have to be everything, but come on. But they, um, if you go on their website, they have, I guess, their own people do have videos and pictures of the place, the aerial view. It's a nice little place. I mean, it's not, well, not little, but it's a lot of stuff. But, um, so that's going to be one of the things I want to do. I will link, you know, if you want, uh, want to check the place out. Um, I would say, yeah, I'm going to put stuff in the, uh, description box. Like, websites, um, uh, to go to to check it out. Um. Say, oh, and the resources where I got my information from. So it's gonna be that. Um, I'm gonna do one thing about Swisher, um, the building. Um, I know there's a company that does cleaning, they go to different places like different restaurants, and I think some stores and clean their bathrooms. I don't think that's part of them. Because when I did some research, I didn't say that that company was part of them. But there's the Swishers uh, where it does the King Edward cigars. And now they do the Swisher sweets and stuff like that. I don't smoke, but <laughs> all because my brother does. You know, I, of course, I don't know about it. But um, my brother's not a Christian, so, <laughs> you know. And I feel like. I'm not going to be all like, oh, you can't do that. I'm not going to be, you know, push him away from, you know, from God. He's got to make that choice. And, you know, so he's uh, doing that. Um, let's see, I already wrote down a story about, um, for, I'm trying to think of it. I, I keep wanting to say Dairy Queen, but it's not Dairy Queens. Um, it's a local ice cream place that takes cash only and it's in the Murray Hill area uh, what we call Murray Hill area it's a neighborhood 
on the west side. And they have several locations. Uh, I might do one on Wits ice cream, but uh, this one's uh, I don't know where my mind went blank, but it's an ice cream place. And it's really old. And it's been there since the 40s. Hasn't changed anything or the concepts. I think it's, the only thing that's changed is the change of hands. And that's been maybe 10 years ago. Um, like I said that those um, a little bit on the Jacksonville Beach, the um, Isaiah, Isaiah D. Hart, I do his son too. Ocean, Ocean, however you say it. Um, I gotta look at the name again. I know it starts with A, uh, no, O S S in it. It's a weird name, but they were governors um, and founder of Jacksonville. So we'll do that. And um, I still got it right this story on the sun. I did one on Isaiah. And we got a, um, the Heart Bridge, which is named after him. And um, they're buried in the cemetery, uh, Evergreen Cemetery, which I have family that's buried in the same area as he is. So we pass it, like, every time. But I want to do different things, like maybe, like, our first mayor, or, you know, the history part of it, but a little fun stuff, too. Um I wish I can do like um adventure landing, but the one that's closest to me is no longer there. It closed down, they demolished it. Rather than the owners um sold it and they now the new owners instead of renovating it or redoing, you know, fixing it up and doing it better because like everybody wanted it like still around but it just needed some work they decided to do whatever i mean it is their property they can do whatever but i'm like that's a staple of jacksonville and uh they have one at um uh, the beaches now they're going to keep the one over in the beach it's a lot bigger it's a water park too arcade um go-karts i think they've got mini golf the one on the west side is just a smaller scale. It just had go-karts, arcade, laser tag, and um, the mini golf. I think the one over at the beaches has um, laser tag too. But, you know, I was hoping to do the one on the west side because it's closer to where I live. And, and it's not so much going on you can do a quick video if you need to do a quick video and you know especially when I have to work at night I need something on the weeks that I have to work at night to do something quick you know and that would have been one of them oh yeah I eventually would do the one and at the beaches but that's be much later down the road <laughs> and um uh, if I don't do it before November, December of this year, it's going to have to be like April of 2024, May, something like that. Um, and so I want to do different things like that. And I love history and I love fun stuff. So, and I want to do something that would, um, so people can know more about Jacksonville than other than Duval and Jaguars. And, uh, and I could probably four more right now to do stuff locally. And, you know, hopefully I can do a little bit of traveling around and stuff like that. But my main focus will be just stuff around Jacksonville. Do that on Fridays, like a video, put out a video there and do a bible study i don't want to do like a walk with me wednesdays and i haven't done it i keep forgetting to do it it just i want to take time during the week and 
just do a video and just say what's on my mind. If I got questions, like, not so much like, well, I guess kind of like a poll, but kind of like, oh, this is going on. What y'all think about this? This is what I think, you know, what's going on or, you know, it's just, there's a lot that I've been thinking about and it's just, I've been wanting to do a video about I just kind of bounce stuff off of other people, you know, especially with like caregiving and all that. Um, like with Miss Betty, I love her pieces because she reminds me a lot of my great aunt, grand aunt, and um, just well, kind of like somewhat personality wise, but a lot of stuff that she has in her house, decorations, how the house is done. It's like my aunt up and down. I'm like, and they would be, if she was still alive, they would be about the same age. Um, my aunt being a few years older than her. When I say a few, maybe three, four, maybe five. But she'll be in her late 90s now, you know. As aggravating as my aunt was at times, because she was a handful um, she just acted like she was uppity and she wasn't really, she thought she had money. She did, didn't, I'm not saying she didn't have money at one point, but it wasn't like she was rich, rich or anything like that. She had, just had a shopping issue. Um, she loved to shop, but, uh, but I can see kind of. My aunt and Miss Betty. And I'm like, alright, Miss Betty. Oh, okay. I shouldn't have said her name, but um But um I tried not to say her name, the person I watched because of the family and just I tried to be safe. But um yeah, so I'm like sometimes I have to call her by her name and I'm like, All right, kinda need to stop doing that. But um uh, so I'm just trying to, you know. It does take a lot of patience, and it's a lot more than I thought it was going to be. So, I'm definitely in the morning, so I'm like, oh, God, please help me, because I don't want to, you know, be rude or mean or anything like that. And, like, just people with dementia, it's like you have to remember that they're probably as frustrated as, as you are. They, you know being treated like a kid and they don't like that and but yet they're kind of being like kids at this point like you have to remind them to brush your teeth wash your hands and make sure they use soap make sure you gotta put the soap in there make sure you know regardless if they don't want a bath or not they have to take a bath at least once a week it's just a lot of that stuff and it's just you have to keep telling them hey go eat stop playing with the stuff and the dishes and the this train or we'll get that you know it's just i think she don't really like that because it's like you're taking over her house and she should be able to do that stuff and the point is is she can't do all that stuff and you know you catch people you know when that and it's just like i think that's where the frustration gets to be at but um so you have to remember like hey they can't help where they're at mentally right now you know they're already there you know where they just don't remember stuff and you have to constantly be on them to do stuff and they don't like that and it's like I gotta be confused into them it's like I know something's wrong with me but I can't figure out what what's wrong with me you know I don't know why these people are in the house why they're doing this why are you doing that water taken over you know they feel like their house is being taken over you you had to do the water uh, do the dishes cook for them you had to do their laundry help them with their baths make sure their teeth are brushed the hair is brushed washing hair it's sometimes a struggle with getting them in the bath and i'm kind of not used to that um i've had an aunt that had alzheimer's and it's to me it was completely different than it is with this person and um it's just kind of interesting like not everybody is the same but there is similarities in each one and some people
someone will just give you a hard time and someone will it's like, well, okay. If, he's, if that's what you say, if that's what I'm supposed to do. My aunt seemed to, I had another aunt, uh, my aunt Leslie, she was like that. She had Alzheimer's and she took care of herself and was able to do that, but she just couldn't remember, you know, me and my siblings, but she'll remember my uh, mom because she's known her, my mom her whole life, uh, my mom's whole life. And um, she, her daughter worked at the convenience store two houses down, uh, well, she was two houses down from her job so she can work, uh, walk to work. And she thought that she, uh, my cousin owned the, um, the convenience store and was grabbing candy bars and all kinds of stuff and just walking out with it. Well, you couldn't, they knew she had the issues. So they're like, there's no sense calling cops. I was like, we know she's got all times, all times. She can't get it, you know, understand like she has to pay for that stuff that her daughter does not own the store. She is a manager. She just works there. So, but they were nice enough to like all pitch in money and just anytime she grabs something, they'll take it out of their jar or whatever they had for the money and or out of their pockets and just pay for it. And oftentimes, you know, my cousin would have had to pay for that stuff. But it was it was sweet of them to do that, you know, because they didn't have to do that. But they understood the situation and knew like, hey, she's not all there mentally that you know, she's not understanding or comprehending anything and calling the cops ain't gonna help, you know. <sighs> Unfortunately people don't really get that or they just don't care and they'll do it anyways and you know that leaves that person confused and not know and scared and not knowing what's going on and they don't know it's like they don't really know right from wrong too much, you know. So yeah, so I think they handled it a good way, but that's like the extent to her issues and doing stuff and yeah, so you definitely, you know, you get, definitely have to have patience for it and if you're a Christian, it, it's probably better because you can sit there and pray, God will help you with it and there's times, I'm like, God, you're going to have to help me with this because you know, it's getting a little too much. There's times I'm just, I don't get much sleep and I'm tired and there's, there's times she don't feel good and tired and she's gets those moves that she's just gets confused or just, you can tell she's not really comprehending why stuff is going on the way it is. So it's, it's really needed and it's just, you know, I try to pray before I go to bed when I get up, especially for my day, and then have to, you know, work, but, you know, it's something that I have to get used to, is working at night, I'm so used to going in, Monday through Friday, you know, between 4.30 and 5.30, and getting off between 9.30 and 11.30, Sometimes 12.30. Depends on what needs to be done. And just, I do the breakfast stuff. Prep. Make sure those things go out. You know, even take the stuff to the classrooms. Because I used to work in the kitchen. But I wanted, I got out of it because I felt like I really need to physically. Because it was getting too much for me to lift stuff. Just completely different story. I still need to do a video about my days as a lunch lady is 17 years. Um, sometimes I'm, I wish I can go back, but at the same time, it's like, is it worth having my body hurt all over for what? You know, I get, don't I didn't get paid much for it. But, um, yeah, it was a lot of, it was interesting a lot of times. And sometimes the workers would be worse than the kids. And sometimes, it be the manager or the supervisor and it's just like it's okay 
we're not kids. Stop acting like it. Stop micromanaging. We got it. We got it. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I don't know what, I forgot what the whole point of this video was, but, alright, um, I better go run to the bathroom and check on the clothes and do all that before I have to leave. I'll see y'all guys later, and thanks for listening to me talk and ramble on. So, see y'all later.